We've been talking about faith, aggressive faith. How many know God's faith is aggressive? Amen? Amen. Amen. We've been talking about, how many are ready for the word? Yes. I don't know about you, but God has put a longing in my heart. Now, first of all, I want to let you know, how many know there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus? Romans 8 and 1. One of the biggest things the enemy would try to do is get you in condemnation to make you feel like you're not eligible or qualified to hear the word of God. So I want you to say, say devil. devil. Come on, say it like, say it like you in authority. Y'all, y'all look like y'all scared. Devil, I don't want him to hurt me. Come on, say, de- act like you scolding your child. Come on, parents. Say, devil, devil. Get, out get out of my mind. Get out of my heart. Get out of my heart. If any man be in Christ, and I am, I am a new creature, a new creation. All the old things have passed away, and behold, everything is new. I have the mind of Christ to receive all God has for me. In Jesus' name, amen. So we sealed it with it in Jesus' name, amen. You got to know, because sometimes you come to church, and have you dealing with all your, your mistakes and your past? How many know God is in control? Yes. One thing, never forget, God is sovereign. Yes, he is. He's sovereign. Let me tell you something. Even when, you, when you're walking with God, your mess-ups aren't mess-ups. It took me about 20 years to realize this, that nothing catches God by surprise. You're saying, well, Pastor, you can't prevent some stuff. Yes, yeah, some things you can, but ultimately what God wants to happen will happen. Yes. And even allow your mess-ups to become stepping stones for you yes. when you trust God. Yes. He'll turn your mess into a message. Yes. He'll turn your misery into a ministry because he specializes in fixing bre- broken things. Amen. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. When you got it, say there. Verse 1 says, Now faith is the assurance, the title deed confirmation. I'm in the amplified version of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of the reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Let me tell you something. Faith doesn't make sense to the natural mind. Faith doesn't make sense that even in the midst when you got a court case coming up, you coming down to the altar and we praying for you and God telling us that you got it. Remember, said, let the peace, I, I, pray. I think I remember we prayed the peace of God come on you and that God was already fighting the battle. Yeah. See, that don't make sense because your flesh will tell you, I got to get this ready. I got to do this. I got this. What if they don't like this? What if I don't say the right thing? What if I don't do the right thing? But when God goes before you, yeah. he makes that path straight. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Skip down to the sixth verse. Sixth verse, but without faith... It is impossible. I'm in the Amplified, and, you're, and I think King James Version, it says, to please God. And the Amplified says, it's impossible to walk with God and please Him. For whoever comes near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that He rewards those who earnestly and diligently seek Him. I don't know about you, but I want to seek Him earnestly. We talked about aggressive faith. We says aggressive, the the whole nature of the word aggressive means an all-out effort to win boldly and relentlessly, assertive, forward, pushy. I don't know if you, you know, we we had a great legend the the past the other day. I pray he found Christ before he died. I pray he did. I'm a great boxing fan of his and one of the greatest of all times in boxing. But like I said, that's only for a small part of life. Yes. Only what you do for Christ will last through eternity. 
was watching the, the, the NBA Finals the other night, and it's just been a relentless battle between Golden State and Cleveland, fighting two heavyweights, just hitting each other, bam, 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 all out effort. Stephon Curry, supposed to be injured. Supposed to be injured. I ain't going for the team. I'm like, well, I want Cleveland to win something. <laughs> I said, maybe we give Stephon. No, I'm for him. I'm glad he's saved. I pray for him. But I won't, you know. But anyway. But I love how can before I, I had to fight from cheering for him because that all-out effort of him just like, yeah. I ain't giving up. I'm going to keep on shooting. Kyrie who? LeBron what? What's the big boy name? Kevin Love, Kevin Love who? They are what? Love that. Bold, relentless, assertive, forward, pushy, militant, forceful, violent, and tough. Aggressive. And if you saw that one between Kevin Durant and him before, and even just the aggressiveness of the going back and forth. Let's look at this today. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. When you get it, let me say there. 1 Timothy, are y'all ready for the word? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I really believe that God is breaking us through. And I shared this on Wednesday night. God is breaking us through at another level. And those that will walk through it are those that will have the faith to see it. You can't walk where you can't see What's the natural tendency? What's the natural tendency? How, do me a favor. If you can put that board to block that door, light. Hallelujah. Real quickly. Block that door. If my sound room, if y'all would just hit all the lights real quickly. All of them off. Quickly. Quickly. Quick, quick, quick. Off, off, off. Everything. 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 What's the tendency when things get dark? When you can't see? Do you run fast? Come on, talk to me. What do you normally do? You stop and you stand still. You stop and you stand still. But how many know life is still going on? Yes, it is. Hit the lights back. Put the spotlights, everything back on. Come on, quick, 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 quick. But when you walk in the work, quick, quick, quick. When you walk, all lights, house lights, everything. When you walk in the work, okay, cut them back off. Cut them back off. I'm giving another drill. Cut them back off so they can be ready. Cut them back off. (laughs) Hallelujah. We're in the dark, right? But when the word of the Lord comes and you get in the word, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, the lights come on. Come on. Amen. Come on. Hit them all. Yeah, there we go. There we go. When the lights come on, then you can make a difference. Are you with me? Faith is your spiritual light. Faith is your spiritual light. 1 Timothy 6 and 12 says, fight. So some of y'all are all ready to fight. Some of y'all got some, still got some, got, got a blade in your purse. Some of you still got a razor. Some cold steel. Some, some of you got some heat, carrying some heat on your ankle in church. I'm not talking about that fight. I'm talking about a spiritual fight. <laughs> fight the good fight of what? Faith. Fight the good fight of the faith in the conflict with evil. Take hop- Now, let me tell you, hear this. There's a conflict going on if you're walking with God. So stop acting surprised when you see the conflict. Do you hear me? If you didn't have any conflict before, you may have not been walking with God. So stop telling on yourself. When you walk with God, there will be conflict. Does everybody understand that? Because you are on the opposing team. You are no longer dropping it like it's hot with Satan. Are you with me? You are now walking with God. And so you're dancing with Jesus. And so the enemy is not happy about that. Let's keep going. Take hold. Now, if you take hold of something, what you got to do? You got to take hold of it. You got to grab it. You got to reach out and take it. 
take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession of faith in the presence of many witnesses. Well, I need, I need, I need two teens up here quickly. Quickly. Give me about four or five teens. Quickly, quickly, quickly. What do you mean? Okay. Come on, quick, 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 quick. Quick, 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 quick. Thank you. Thank you. If you're a teenager. Oh, you are still a teenager. Go back. You're too big. <laughs> I just want newly graduates. I need William. Come bring me some more snacks. I got some more money. Oh, you there? Go get your snacks. Oh, be careful. <laughs> so get, up, get, get across here, across stage. I want y'all, we all going to read. Stand on your feet. Let's read this together. Come on, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. I want you to get this in your spirit. I want you to get this in your spirit. And stop acting surprised when you realize you're in a fight. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. You got, you got, you got, to, how many know? It's in your mouth. Now, let's stand across. Stand across. Y'all can stand across. Oh, they can't see if you do that? Okay. That's all right. Are y'all ready? Yeah. One thing I love about Muhammad Ali, he wasn't scared of a fight. When he was, when he was scared, he knew how to speak. He, he, he talked a lot of trash. Called Foreman the gorilla. No, he called, no, he called, uh, uh, um, not, you know, he called him the zombie. Uh, the bond was, you know, just, uh, form was the, but he called, he called uh, Frazier the gorilla. He, he, he would start naming his opponents. He's scared now. But he'd start talking and start talking his way into the fight. Yeah. S- say it to himself, he's the greatest. Are you with me? Some of you all need to get that mentality, amen? Y'all need to say, so I got the greater one on the side of me. Therefore, I'm great. Therefore, I'm great. Amen. You got to get that in you, Amen. Come on, you walking around like your head down, like you say, young people, you can't be walking around like, you got to know that you got the greater one inside of you, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Fight the what? Good let's, let's say it again, come on. Fight, fight the good fight of faith. Let's start over, everybody say it. come on, let's say it. Fight, fight the good fight of faith in conflict with evil, take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession of faith in the presence of many women. Hey, hey for you, that lets me know you got to confess something. You got to take hold and you got to confess. You got to take hold. Now, if you do this right here, she took hold of it. Are you with me? If she wasn't ready to see what he's going to do, his hands are full. <laughs> he can't take hold of it, but he's holding, some, he's holding a bunch of other stuff. You got to put some stuff down so you can take hold. Uh, you got see some of us we like that don't feel bad God knew that was going to happen today William some of us are like that even when we put stuff down we still ain't we still not receiving did you hear me you got to take hold get ready now are y'all with me yes you got to take hold you got to take hold let me try something else because that's yours you got to take hold who likes Cheetos come on I mean goldfish you got to take hold. I got more money, so I'm going to pay for it. <laughs> Who likes applesauce? Come on, come on. You got to take... No, I, nobody. Okay. <laughs> I got the choosy team up here. <laughs> Just act like you like it, amen? You got, <laughs> give yours to somebody else then, amen. You got to take hold. Oh, you can't drop it. It's mine now. You dropped it. <laughs> you got to take hold. You got to take hold. Boom. You gotta take hold, boom. You gotta take hold, boom. Okay. I know you look like I don't like Fritos. That's all right. You gotta take hold. You gotta take hold. That's some of us I like. I don't like faith. I don't like love. I don't like joy. I wanna be mad right now. You ever had somebody try to minister to you when you wanted to be mad? Just let me be mad right now. Are y'all with me? Oh, you one, two, three, four. You got to take hold. One, two, three. Take hold now. It ain't going to help you. you take he caught that. Let me try that. You got to take. <laughs> he still caught that. One, one more time. Look, look, look. That's how you got to be for God. That's how you got to be for God. You got to what? You got to take what? <laughs> and if you drop it, you pick it up. Amen. Let's give them a hand clap. Thank you so much. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Nah, they're yours now. You took hold. 
Now, if you give it back, you don't got hold, do you? She says, she, she, come back here, Taylor. Come on. You're going to preach with me since, we, since you asked the question. My graduate, okay? What's, what's, tell them what you asked me. <laughs> say it louder to the mic. What do you say? Come on. Do you want this back? Do I want this back? Do I want this back? That's what some of y'all acted. God giving you faith. You want this back, God? Love, you want this back? No, God said it's yours. You may be seated if you can. You may be seated if you can. It says fight the good fight of faith. It's good to have our graduate. Give our graduate a, a hand clap. Amen. In church. In the Greek, this describes a fierce combat with an adversary. Faith pushes its way through all resistance. You don't let it go. It's a slide where I'm going to talk about that. Okay, there we go. Therefore, I say unto you, what so things you desire? Mark 11, 24. Please highlight this. Write this down. Highlight it on your tablet, on your the digital device, any way you can. Star it. Hey, if you got a Bible, write in that Bible. If you have a Bible that you can't write in, throw it in the trash can. There's no need to have it. My well, Bible's holy. I don't want it. Right? No, your Bible is your working manual. It's basic instructions before leaving earth. You should be able to write in that thing so when the devil's hitting you, you can go right to those scriptures and you can find it. And it's not helpful if you can't find what you need in it. Amen? Amen. So you want to write all in that thing? You, any of my Bibles, expensive Bibles, $100, $200 Bibles, have something to it. they all been written in. Amen? Write in that word so you can get, so you can grow thereby. It says, therefore, now when you see it, therefore, what you got to do, Taylor? You got to know what it's there for. What do you got to do, church? You got to what? Know what it's there for. God's about to drop and says, I say unto you, this is Jesus, it's in red, what things soever you desire, when you pray, that means you got to have some time with him. You don't have a prayer time, then you ain't going, you know, you got to have some time with him. But when you, you desire, when you pray, what? Believe. What? Believe. Doubt? Believe. Hope and a wish? Believe. Maybe? Believe. Believe what? That you what? Y'all getting weak on me now. You like the church in America. You're getting weak. You what? Believe, Believe that you receive them and you will what? Yes. And you will have them. Receive means to take. Oh, now don't let it go. Oh, see, I took that with force. You must don't like Cheetos. Okay. How about this? I can't do money because you'll rip the money out of my hand. But just act like there's something that you like because you can go switch it out for something that you like. You want to keep it, right? You ain't letting go. Let's walk. Let's come out here so they can see it. Okay. You got to receive. You got to seize it with a grip which can't be shaken off. Weak faith. So no, no, look. I'm trying to shake her hand. She ain't, we ain't going to bust the bag, but she, now she holding it tight because I told you she could trade it. <laughs> Are you with me? If you let it go, it's gone. Notice this. Now, let's say I'm the believer. I had her being the believer now, but say I'm the believer. She's representing God. If I let go, it's gone. Quote by Gloria Copeland. But if I hold on to it and I don't let go, what am I holding on to? My healing, my deliverance. My, 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 my spouse being saved, our marriage being anointed, my children being, I ain't letting go of that promise, God. You, you promised me in your word. I'm standing on it. Whatever that thing you're believing God for, that new car is a great deal that won't put you in debt. How many of you got to go, you got you to lay hold on to it, amen? That promotion, some of you, God is, some of you are going to be independently wealthy, have a desire not to be dependent on the system. Is there anybody in here like that today? Don't let go of it. Well, people say, well, you can't do that. You'll never make that. No, don't let. See how she holding it? It's like she relaxing, right? But she ain't relaxing. Her grip had gotten tighter. She's developed a system to hold on to this bag and not let go. Because I told her she could trade it in. Amen? Amen. And that's what you got to do. Got to develop this. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You have a good one now. So when we, let's keep going. First Samuel. This is where I'm trying to get to. This is where I'm in. We'll look at the life of David. David was a warrior. David was a warrior. And we're looking at David and Goliath. And 
this year I plan to talk about this on Memorial Day weekend because we're dealing with honoring our vets. And this represented a great battle. And let me tell you something. As soon as you go out this door, you're going to have battles that you have to face. Some of you are dealing with them right now. Some of you brought those battles inside of here. But I'm letting you know this. Hear me, hear me, hear me. You've already won the battle. You've already won the battle. Listen to me. Listen to me. 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm in the Amplified Version. 41 through 48 says, The Philistine came and approached David with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked around and saw David, he derided and disparaged him because he was just a young man with a ruddy complexion and a handsome appearance. Despise not your youth. Despise not what you don't know and what you don't have. See, Goliath was the enemy, and he was looking at, what you going to do? That's why, you know, we have in the church adopted many of the principles of the world, and the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of, of your mind through the word of God. So you may prove what is good, except in the perfect will of God. The world would say, you got to kiss up, and you got to know somebody to get somewhere. That's what the world says. And the kingdom of God says, know him, and I'll get you places you, you thought you could never go. Are you with me? God will open up doors that no man can close if you follow him. God will take you places that you don't even think you're ready for if you follow him. Let's keep going. 43rd verse. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with a shepherd's staff? Because David, you know, they, he tried on the armor. Saul tried to give him his armor, like the king's armor. Can you imagine? And he put all these things on, and they didn't fit. Everything that the world would need for the battle, he tried it, but it didn't fit him. It didn't fit. Some of us are still trying to be like the world, but my notice to you today is not going to fit. You can't reward evil with evil. You end up, you find out, you go, you go on the doctor because your, your, your blood pressure off. Your heartbeat is off. You're stressed out because you're not doing the way things should be done in the kingdom. Amen? Thank you, honey. I got one amen in this Presbyterian church. Amen? The Philistine said, David, am I a dog that you come to me with a shepherd's staff? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine also said to David, come to me. And I will give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the beasts of the field. Begin to threaten him. And then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come. See, he says, you got all the weapons. You got missiles. You got every, you got every, the spear was like a missile back then because it was long range. Javelin. Hit you a hundred feet away. You come with all of that. All he had was some stones. And a slingshot, right? But more than that, it wasn't what he was carrying. It was who he was walking with. You know, you've heard probably so many messages. I know I was raised in church. I heard so many messages about those stones and how he reached down into the, to the, to the water to get them out the brook to get them stones. And I heard people preach all day about that. They must have been smooth. And they moaned about that. But the emphasis of the text is that he was with God. He could have used anything. Did he hear me? But God used something that he was familiar with. Isn't it something how God will take something that you're familiar with and use it for your glory to slay these giants in your life? Let's keep going. And David said, to you come with me with a sword of spirit, John, but come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. He said, you know what? You've done more than taunt me. You've taunted God now. And I'm on God's side. And he sent me to you. Now notice this, 46 verse. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I will what? Come on, say it like you mean. I will what? I don't think he said it all week. Goliath is a big giant. He's bigger than Shaquille O'Neal. Bigger than Wilt Chamberlain. You're talking about a good eight feet at least. With his, uh, all his helmet and everything on, he was about, it, it, it was, that was, his helmet was, I think, about a foot by itself. 
So he stood about nine foot with all his armor on. This day the Lord will hand you over to me and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the corpse of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth so that all the earth may know that there's a God in Israel. This won't no weak type of faith. This brother knew who he was in God. And that this entire assembly may know that the Lord does not save with the sword or with the spear. For the battle is the Lord's. 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 And he will hand you over to us. When the Philistine rose and came forward to meet David, and David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. Notice this. He came quickly. Then the Philistine rose and came forward to meet David. David. Now, no, notice when the Philistine got up, you ever heard people say, when anybody can fight, don't make me get up. <laughs> I mean, know what I'm talking about. I know some of y'all have been saved. I'm talking about BC. Hopefully, this is not happening for you now. You're AD after Christ. Amen? That's coming to your life. But BC, before Christ, there used to be a day before I was, had gotten saved that we used to say, don't make me get up. You know, someone will be just talking, don't make me get up. Because if I get up, it's going to be some trouble. You got to watch the quiet ones. So I was a quiet one. You don't really want to mess with, I'm not, I'm not, you know, believe it or not, back then I was quiet. You know, don't make me get up, you know. And it'd be the last, ah, nah, 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 nah. and they've already gotten them out. You ain't going to get up. But let me tell you something. David, see, Goliath started it, but David ended it. Because he, he, he knew who he was standing for. He said, okay, you did all your talk. What you going to do to me? Let me tell you what I'm going to do, not just to you, but to your whole army. Yeah. And why? Because greater is with me than he that's, he, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. And there's more with me than there are against me. Yeah. Now, notice, so he, look, he gets up. He came forward to meet David. And David, he didn't slow down. I hope you notice that he ran quickly. He ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistines. So if that was the, that mic was about, he was bam, boom. Can't promise you I can do that again. <laughs> he took off. He just put like he, he got ready and like, man, I'm I'm there. Because God's with me. Yeah. God wants you to run to the battle. Yeah. He wants you to run with faith. Amen. Yeah. Look, verse 40, it came to pass when the Philistine rose and came. He hastened. Suddenly he went headlong. With great speed, it means in the Hebrew. He was so far from fear. I'm sure he was scared on the inside, but he disobeyed the fear and went with faith. Yeah. There's always an inward choice when you're in a battle, whether you're going to choose faith or fear. I wish I could promise you that the fear would leave. It doesn't leave. You, you learn to do it afraid. You learn to walk by faith even when you're afraid. Are y'all with me? Because sometimes we're waiting. Sometimes people are waiting for this magical thing where fear is going to leave. Every time I get on stage, there's some fear that comes over me. Because I'm, by nature, an introvert. By natural nature, I'm an introvert. So when I get ready to come, I have to get in the mindset I got to get in front of people. Are you with me? And I have to pray and ask God, give me the strength to come out of myself. Are you with me? Got to get out of myself. Got to walk in faith and choose faith over fear. It's a choice. David knew his covenant with God and ran aggressively toward the enemy. Now, that speaks to something. You got to know that you're with him. Amen? And I'm about to wrap it up. See, you got to say, devil, get out of my way. I'll either go past you or I'm going to run through you. Either way, I'm going to possess everything that rightfully belongs to me in Christ Jesus. Bulldog faith, it does not roll over and play dead. It, does, it, it attacks the problem head, long, head on. Understand, it has the mindset, somebody's going to go down today and it's not going to be me. That's the type of faith that David had. That's the type of faith that you have. Did you hear me, church? 
that's the type of faith that you possess. All you have to do is what Nike says, just do it. Just do it. Let's keep going. Hebrews 10 and 23 says, let us hold fast. What? Let us hold fast to what? That's something you got to say. You got to profess your faith. The profession of your faith without what? Without wavering. What does it mean to waver? Shy away. Shy away. Without backing down. Huh? Remember that? I need, come on up here, Chris. You got, the, who, who, you got the baby? I need a brother. Take the baby right quick. You from Brooklyn. I need somebody from Brooklyn. <laughs> so let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Now, don't hurt me now. I'm just, we just want to do a little scenario up here. You didn't bring any weapons up here, did you? No, I'm just messing. I'm just messing. Let us have the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful to that promise. This is my brother in love, so I can mess with him a little bit. But remember back in the day, BC, you better get in a fight. Don't touch me. No, don't touch me. Don't touch me. You better not touch me. You better not. You better. Y'all remember that? Come on, we just keep on. Yeah, don't touch it. No, you bad. What up? What up? What up? Yeah, I don't know. What's up? You, no, you go for it. You, no, you go for it. You go. And then somebody has to push you. <laughs> and then it be on. No, that won't David. He was, he was ready to go. Are you with me? Yeah. Some of us, this is what we do with the devil. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. You better not touch me. You better not touch me. Are you with me? But the only difference is, he, he, he's already stopped. Oh, open hand, open hand. He's already stopped pimp slapping you. <laughs> You say, don't touch me, bam, don't touch me, bam, don't touch me. He know you playing. You ain't gotten into warfare. You ain't gotten into prayer. You keep trying to figure it out in your mind how you're going to handle it. Stop trying to use your little pea brain. and Stop taking it to the, to the spirit realm in faith. You know, I, initially when we first got started, I remember the praying with the men. Thank you, bro. Give him a hand clap. And we had our prayer group with the men. Different ones would call me when they had you know, an argument and stuff. I said, that's good. And all. I said, have you taken authority of that spirit over your house? Mm-hmm. Whether it be you or her. Are you with me? So said, what spirit, pastor? That spirit of confusion. You just came out of prayer. You, think that you just came from church. We just came from church. We had the biggest argument ever. That's the spirit of confusion. Mm-hmm. Bind that spirit of confusion over your household in the name of Jesus. Command that thing to leave. Before you get in the car and leave today, I bind the spirit of confusion right now over my household. I speak peace over our car. I speak peace. Are y'all with me? Amen. Go ahead. And you got you to you you see what that thing is. And you got to do some warfare in the spirit and take authority. Amen? Now, some of you are going to get what I'm meaning when you're eating a piece of chicken later. It says in Amplified, so let us seize and hold fast. You're going to be just biting on the chicken bone. Oh, that's what Pastor was talking about. So let us seize and hold fast and retain without wavering the hope we cherish and confess and our acknowledgments of it for he who promises reliable, sure, and faithful to his word. Amen? We must keep constant relentless faith, pressure on the situation, relentless, unyielding, steady, persistence. Now notice, relentless means you, you, you're unyielding, steady, persistent. You got to keep an attitude. Everybody say your attitude is important. Attitude. See, I deal with young people all the time. When I, when I, whenever I have a chance to work with young people, I always talk about, to them about the attitude because I deal with so many old folk that have the wrong attitude. Yes. And it's harder to change it when you're, young, when you're old. Yes. You can know to do right, but see, when you're young, you don't have that many years of acting a fool. Are you, we all can change by the grace of God and with the power of God, but I'm just saying it's just, you just don't have the long history of being a fool. Yes. So it's like your attitude's important. Then not only that, your words, what you say, they ain't never going to mean nothing. Amen. I can't do that. Now you got to plow that up in the name of Jesus. I will be something. I will do something. Greatest heat is in me than heat is in the world. God's called me to greatness. God, I, I, my best days are ahead of me. My worst days are behind me. I have a brand new future. I am, let me say, you're di- I am not dying. I'm living. I feel the life of God coming alive inside of me. You got to speak that life over you. Your thoughts. You got to think the right things. Ken Fagan used to say, it's all right if a, if a bird fly over you and, and try to drop some poop over. But it's another thing if you let the bird just nest in you and, and build a nest on your brain. It's all right to have a few bad thoughts, but you got to say, I cancel that bad thought in the name of Jesus. 
I will make it. My actions, my actions have to line up with the word of God. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Now look, stand up. We're going to close with this, our confession. Come on. I want to give you something to confess. And I put this up on the Facebook fan page. Becomes your exclamation point. Confession for healing. Start, start right here where it says, I fear the Lord. Come on, let's read it again. I fear the Lord and I prolong my days. I keep my heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. My desire is only of the Lord and is a tree of life. I fear the Lord and he is my fountain of life. I have a sound heart and it is the life of my flesh. Now, come on. Now, y'all got to say this with some life in it now. No, I have a sound. Are y'all with me? Yes. Come on now. We're confessing the word of God. I have what? A merry heart, and it does good like a medicine. My belly is satisfied by the fruit of my mouth, and with the increase of my lips, I am filled. Death and life are in the power of my tongue. I speak the life-giving words of God, and I receive life and health in my body. I fear the Lord and prolong my days. I keep my heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Last page. My desire is only of the Lord, and it is the tree of life. I fear the Lord, and he is my fountain of life. I have a sound heart, and it is the life of my flesh. I have a merry heart, and it does good like medicine. My belly is satisfied by the fruit of my mouth. Peace of my lips, I am filled. Death and life are in the power of my tongue. I speak life-giving words of God and receive life and health in my body. Jesus Christ has borne my sickness and carried my pain. He was stricken, smitten of God, afflicted for me. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needed to obtain peace, well-being for me, was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, I am healed and made whole. I now have perfect health in my body. The will of God is done on earth as it is done in heaven. There is no sickness in heaven. Therefore, I am not sick at all on the earth. Jesus was never sick on this earth. Jesus is in me, and his life flows in me. And he was in the world, so am I in the world. I am healthy as Jesus was healthy upon this earth. Amen and amen. Give God some praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You got to confess the word. We don't allow situations but constant pressure on us. We keep the pressure on the situation. We keep the faith pressure on the devil. We hold his feet to the fire. We resist the devil, and he will flee from us. He will run from you as you in stark terror when you stand firm against him. Stand to your feet, everybody. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You hear? You say, Pastor, I need more of him. I need to stand strong. I need my faith renewed. Just raise your hands up to him. Father, right now, we just pray, God, for every person under the sound of my voice, Lord, that you would encourage us to hold fast to what you've ordained, that we won't, God, go backwards, but we'll go forward. God, there's things that you've literally told us and you showed us, you promised us that will happen. God, we will walk in that, and we will walk in all boldness that it will occur. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Give God some praise. Come on.